could I get you to sign my petition here? You see, I have this petition, and it's a drive, you know, to get people to sign it, because after all, for every signature that I get on here, I get two cents or maybe three cents or maybe half a cent. But depending upon what issue it is, you know, I have to go out and collect signatures to get this put on the ballot, so that way I could be a part of the political process, you know. And I really don't have a job, so I need to get this done so that I could earn some money, so I could pay for my bills, you know, so I could take care of my family. So I really don't care what the issues are. I just care whether or not I get signatures. So could you sign this, please? Often, you'll see most people that are involved in the political process are just like that. They really don't care what the issues are. You could put them in a set of circumstances, and if there were a group of 10,000 people and one person, and that one person was right, but the 10,000 people could vote, and the one person who was right couldn't vote, they would not be interested in solving the issue for the one person who could not vote. They would go along with the 10,000 that could vote, because that's what politics was all about from the very beginning. We, the people. And whenever you put a we, the people, instead of me as I am, then you find suddenly the responsibility of we, the people, means that nobody's taking responsibility. Because God, who is called I am, says the buck stops here. I am will decide your responsibility. And that's how the buck stops. You see, the responsibility of every individual's actions is responsible to the person who's making the action. If I have done sin, I am responsible for sin. If I don't take care of sin, then I am responsible for my own salvation. God has provided the means for me to be saved. But you see, unless I take the opportunity to use that means of salvation, I'm responsible. God doesn't send me to hell. God allows me to go the place where only I could exist with my sinful nature, which is hell and the lake of fire. So a lot of times people will get into these political discussions and debates by saying, well, it's your social and moral responsibility. After all, a Christian would do this, that, or the other thing. And then they'll argue about, well, you know, I'm not of this world and I'm just passing through. Yeah, but you occupy. Well, yeah, but an occupying force isn't one that could vote. It's not the resident force because they haven't been a resident there because I'm not a resident of the world, but I'm a resident of the kingdom of God. And I've come here as an ambassador, so I don't really belong to this world. And the world has nothing in me, so obviously that I really don't have a participation in those forces of evil that are working behind the government systems, behind the principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places that I should be participating in something that I know isn't going to accomplish the purposes that God sent me to do. So what do I have to do with politics? Well, that's why we have this, Diddy Bill, because we wanted to discuss the political issues. It's not a question of whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. It's a question of whether you're a Christian or not. Because you see, a Christian has a responsibility to be Christ-like. You know, look like Christ, act like Christ, be like Christ. That's what Christian means, Christ-like. So Christ-likeness would be kind of like doing what Jesus did, being like Jesus was, saying the things he said and doing the things he did. And what he did was to do those things that he saw his Father in heaven doing. Because when they were asked, why do you do these things you do? And he says, I do those things by him who sent me. I do those things by him who is telling me what to do. And they rejected the idea that God could speak to him and treated him as though he were nuts, as though God, the living God, could speak to you, but he's not speaking to our high priest. He's not speaking to our scribes and our Pharisees. He's not speaking to our leaders, but he's speaking to you. And he says, yes, God, my Father, is speaking to me. Your Father is speaking to you, and you don't even know who your Father is. But God is speaking to me, so I only do those things that are pleasing to him. And if you had known me, you would know he who sent me. And so Jesus made a very dramatic distinction between the people of God 
and the people with god the person with god the individual who is one with god and that's what god prayed for you jesus in praying for his disciples said father i don't pray that you take them out of the world i pray that you would change them and make them one with us that you would make them one with me as i am with you and you are in me that they would be one and that they would be one with us and so he prayed for this unity to be with jesus in such a way that they would know who what and how the father operates they would be so consumed with knowing and hearing the word of god as it's spoken to them that they would be directed by jesus himself as he gave them and it said that he could give without measure as he gave to them and he prayed for them that the holy spirit would come to them and live inside them and he would be the demonstration through love of the fact that they were his disciples indeed because they loved one another so you see it wasn't about being a part of this great big group of people that called themselves christians it was a part about being who they were as they were the way they are one to one with god at one minute which is what atonement means at one minute to become one with god our father and the only way you could ever become at one minute was through what jesus had done so long story short so to speak you had to become one with god so that you were responsible to the one not responsible to the church not responsible to your pastor not responsible to your elder but responsible before god for who you are and that's where politics doesn't do that politics is never responsible politics always says vote for me and i'll do for you what you can't do for yourself sound familiar vote for me and i will do for you what you can't do for yourself and i will take care of your needs and i will provide for you and i will take care of what i think you want as a group of people have you ever been involved in a group of people and tried to get them all to agree on one thing see it takes persuasion you have to kind of talk to them you have to kind of convince them that they want what you want but you don't get to be represented at 101 Jesus represents you before the Father. Jesus said, I will intercede day and night for you. I will be your God, and you will be my people. And he says it to you, one-on-one. He doesn't say it to you, the people. He says to you, one-on-one. Because he developed a personal relationship that only God could do. Now, politics is nice. Politics is interesting. Politics is the political system with which it says, we want so we will do according to what we feel is right there's a problem there what if they're wrong what if they're wrong what if one person knows they're wrong and tells them they're wrong well we'll vote on it so the majority is right and the minority is wrong you see jesus was in the minority always Jesus was the only one who came down from heaven and ascended back into heaven to tell us the truth. So, in political venues, whenever you find yourself caught up into the world and its ways with trying to take a vote or trying to stand up for whatever, quote unquote, we the people want, you're going to find you're fighting against not the people, but against the principality that's behind the people the power that's at work behind the people, the spiritual wickedness that's going on behind the people, because that's what's motivating the people. God doesn't motivate people by a mass appeal. He appears to each person individually. And when we see in the book of Genesis, God appearing, the people, we the people, saw a variety of things. Some saw lightning, some saw, saw thunder, some heard the voice of God, some heard the voice of thunder. Some saw peelings of lightning, some saw God and were fearful. But of one voice they said, Moses, we want you to go up the mountain because this is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. We don't want to be anywhere near him. You go up and find out what he wants for us. So they were terrified. And that's kind of what politics does too, because politics likes to hide behind we the people instead of I say. 
many politicians in our history have come forward and said, the buck stops here, or I am saying. But they don't really take personal accountability for it. And the ones that do usually are treated as great leaders after the fact. But at the time, they're really thought of as being foolish or a failure or wrong. One person who thought he was always right was Nixon. Now, obviously, they called him Tricky Dick and all these other things. But to put it bluntly, as a politician, Nixon was a genius in a lot of ways. A lot of the things he did was maybe egomaniacal, but at the same time, he was quite genius in what he did as far as running the country. As a vice president, there was by far none greater or none more experienced in world affairs than Nixon at the time. And so it's interesting to see how he, as being evil, could influence those things in politics and be treated as great in his power base of what he was able to accomplish and to do. You yourself have an ability. You may not know that. You see, God says, I hold the king's heart in my hand. I can turn it any way I want to. You need only to pray and watch and see what I will do. Political power seems to be obvious about whether or not you can raise enough petitions, votes, and people signing on the dotted line in order to get what they think they want for a temporary solution. But they don't look at the long term or the outcome. They don't look at what the down the road will accomplish or what the personal responsibility is. Because you see, each person, you and I, are going to stand before a living God. And we're going to answer for the things that we did in our body, whether for good or whether for evil. They'll be cast into, as it were, a lake of fire or cast into a fire. And though you may pass through that fire, some of your works will be consumed as though they were works of the flesh and not of the spirit. Things that God didn't tell you to do, but things you did on your own. Kind of like politics, you see. There's nothing wrong with getting involved in politics, and that's the point of this video perspective. There's nothing wrong with you being a Republican. There's nothing wrong with you being a Democrat. There's nothing wrong with you being an Independent. There's nothing wrong with doing any of those things unless you do them without God. Because, you see, that's where the political Christian fails the test of Christianity. Because the test of all Christianity is, what is Christ-like? Jesus said, I only do those things that's pleasing to my Father. What is Christ like in Christian politics? Are you asking God in every decision to do what He says? Or are you doing what we the people says? Because you see, politics for a Christian is not about we the people, but it's about what God said. David chose in his own sinfulness as a king of Israel, as a man after God's own heart, as a man who had all authority in the land, to use that authority for his own purposes. He chose specifically to commit murder and to sin and commit adultery and to sin and commit fornication in the sight of God and before all the people. And he tried to get away with it. And he tried to cover it up and to hide it. And the people knew. Finally, the prophet confronted him in his sin and David admitted it. Yes, I have sinned. I've committed evil in the sight of God. And God said, pick your punishment. And God dealt with it. One on one. Now the people suffered for it. God deals with you. One on one. He deals with the consequences of your choice. Not everyone else's choice. You can choose to vote or not vote. And voting could be a sin and not voting could be a sin. So how do you make the difference? How do you know which way to vote? How do you know whether you're committing sin by voting or not voting? God. God our Father is real. You either have to live with that fact or deny it. Because the bottom line is your world is going to always be influenced by the reality of the facts. Fact of, is God real in your life? Is he speaking to you and directing you in every circumstance and situation of your life? Because he said every hair on your head is counted. He said that every member of your body is recorded in a book of life before you were even born, much less conceived in your mother's womb. He said, I knew you 
before the foundations of the world. If God is that great, and God is so omnipotent, omnipresent, and existing outside of time that he knows everything that's going to occur, why are we doing our own thing, we the people, instead of doing what God says to do in politics? Why are we choosing to listen to what men will say than to not care about any debate, but simply ask God, Father, do you want me to vote for so-and-so? Yes or no? Father, do you want me to vote for so-and-so? Yes or no? Do you want me to vote? Yes or no? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who bringeth out, but give it to all men liberally. God said, ask me. God said, pray to me. God says, get down on one knee or two. God says, I am the Lord thy God, thy maker, who giveth songs of the night. I am the Lord Almighty. Walk before me humbly. God says, I will be found of those who seek for me with all of their heart. I will be heard, Jesus said, if you would just listen and harden not your heart. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, as it says in the provocation. And Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they will not follow the voice of another. So, who should we listen to in a political arena? Our heart. Not the issues that men will lay out before you, because after all, you know who's presenting those issues. Some poor slob that's out there just trying to make a buck. He doesn't care what the issues are. He just simply cares whether he gets a signature. The politician doesn't care about what the issues are. He simply cares about getting voted for and elected because he's running a race and he's trying to win that race. He cares in so far and in so much as what is presented before him at the time of what he needs to deal with at that moment, he will deal with. Other than that, he doesn't care. What's out of sight is out of mind, and he doesn't pay attention to it unless it's brought before his eyes and he has to do something with it, especially with we the people watching. So the reality of a political situation always boils down to what has God said for you to do? Because the political issue is really a life issue. What are you doing with your life? Are you walking with God? Are you talking with God? Are you serving the living God? Or are you serving an image of God that you created in your own mind that no longer is alive and well and living in your heart, but is standing on the outside, knocking on the door of your heart, trying to get in? He's trying to tell you what to do today. He's trying to speak to you about where to go, what to do, and how to be. He's trying to show you that politics comes from the realization of the knowledge that God is the authority. God is in control. God is in charge. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me in his hands. He's got every politician in his hands. He's got the heart of the king in his hands and he turns it whatsoever will he will. Whatsoever way he will. He chooses. He directs. He appoints. He sets kings and princes in place. He sets magistrates in their order. He presents to the people his authority. We have but to honor it. Because even in an election, whether you like the results or not, God determines the outcome. So really, when you stop and think about it, when you pray about it, you're either doing God's will or not. And it has nothing to do with the issues. It has nothing to do with being a Republican. It has nothing to do with being a Democrat. It has nothing to do with being an independent or whatever party comes up next, a Christian. But it has to do with the party of one, the party of the Son. The kingdom of God that has come to this world, that God has said we are a part of that kingdom now, that that kingdom of heaven is all about us, that it has become a righteousness for us, that we should act according to the will of God our Father in every circumstance of life that we're living in, to demonstrate to the world that Though you cannot see it, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and it is even about us, among us, and in us, as we live according to the principles that God has set forward, the person that God has set forward, the reality of the relationship that God has set forward in Jesus Christ to demonstrate to the world that the kingdom is here, even now, in us, as we live according to it. 
Because in our relationship with God, if we would but ask, we shall receive. If we would but seek, we would find. If we would but knock, the door would be opened. If we would but listen, we would hear God speak. The questions for the politician and the question for the political person, the question for you in your political endeavors now, as you choose to vote, as you choose to make decisions for eternity, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. But rather, don't do anything unless. And this is an important part. Get a piece of paper. Write it down. You know, maybe a clipboard, maybe a pen. Don't do anything unless you hear his voice. Don't do anything unless you know it's God's will. Don't do anything unless you're going to stand before a living God and give account for what you just did according to your own decision-making process of the freedom that you have in this life to choose. And you made the choice without God or you made the choice with God. I know not what other men may do and I know not what other men may say, but as for me and my house, we will serve the living God in our choices today. And we'll demonstrate those choices every day as we seek to walk with God in a humble way. As we just simply say, I can't do it. I can't figure it out. I don't know the answer, God. You do. Show me the way. And God will. Today, let God direct you His way.